Ni hao, honeymooners. This is Moshe. Uh, and his wife. Uh, and just due to the nature of time and space, we actually ended up uh, recording the intro to the podcast you're about to hear, I would say 12 hours before the earthquake in Taiwan. And the whole thing's about Taiwan. And we're all like, Taiwan was cool and fun and ha ha ha. Here's some anecdotes. But it just seemed weird to be like, yeah, Taiwan was cool. And not mention the fact that we had recorded this before the earthquake. So now that the earthquakes happened... Our thoughts are with the people of Taiwan, who we now consider to be like family. We had such an amazing time there. Really, our our hearts go out to anyone who was affected by the 7.3 magnitude earthquake Which that is coming, happened 14 hours after we left Taiwan. And is coming our way, actually. We're going to get one. We're due for the big one here. But uh, anyway, Taiwan, we love you. Xie xie for all the... Or xie xie? Xie xie. Xie xie for all of the love. And here is your episode. <music> Ni hao. And welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Ni hao, Natasha. Ni hao. Uh, See, you say thank you in... Chinese, xie xie. That, yeah. But I thought it was xi xi. Xi xi? Or xie xie. You thought it was xi xi? Yeah, so I kind of did that the whole trip. I don't think anybody Taiwan. was confused why you were mispronouncing xie xie. <laughs> I think they kind of got a look at you and realized perhaps you were not a Chinese national. Uh, we just got back from Taiwan. Uh, we were there doing some advocacy for the Chinese government. Um, the uh, we, we're hoping for a quick, a quick and easy takeover. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, How'd you like it, Natasha? First uh, international Asian trip with child. Uh, it was fun. How did it compare to when you went to Thailand as a single woman? Uh, Thailand, single woman was much more fun. Right. This was like, a, I was just like watching my kid like, you know, like extremely intently. Yeah, you were definitely on her. I would say on her like well, a well. We're at a like night a, market in Asia, and like everyone's like, you know, it's so crowded, and like we had a pretty there's w- so much to look at. It's we had a pretty white experience at the at the <laughs> Taiwanese night market because everybody was saying like, oh, you got to go to the Taiwan night markets. That's the thing, and they're these like big open air kind of bazaars, you know, of food. And you walk through them and there's all these booths and things and they're grilling up octopus and squid and cuttlefish balls. And um, we walked to the end of the night market, didn't eat anything and took a taxi home. (laughs) It was just so stressful to have to like order in Chinese and also like there was nowhere to sit. And I didn't know what anything was. Be honest, Natasha. What? You got beaten by the stinky tofu stand that's kind of where my knees dropped uh yeah yeah you were definitely not you were not a stinky tofu lady no although i will say i, I doubled back and i got stinky tofu at some point on Moshe the trip was very determined to try this delicacy well, i was very interested in stinky tofu just because of the name you know i love all things stanky that's uh, sort of my thing I, yeah. I love it stank i love it stank and uh but then i heard that that the stank tofu at the night market was uh, boiled in duck blood <laughs> And had duck blood, <laughs> duck blood chunks, and you had to ask for them. And boy, could you smell them! And you had to ask for it with no with no chunks, and I didn't know how to say that because I only learned two phrases in Mandarin: ni hao, and xie xie. <laughs> so, but I did go back um, with a guide, with our guide Jackie, mm-hmm. our guide Jackie, who was a he was a Taiwanese guy, but he said he uh, he welcomed the, the the Chinese invasion. That's what he told us. And I think he represents a, a political minority in Taiwan, but but a su- substantial minority. He also said that he didn't really want to talk to you about politics. That's true. I say <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Moshe's like, do you like to talk about religion and the politics of Taiwan? He's he like, was no, like, no, no, but but you are paying me, so <laughs> look, I'll go ahead and field your ignorant question. Uh, but it, I'm glad I asked him. About, by the way. Jackie had, I think, tattooed eyebrows. I believe he had tattooed on eyebrows. But um, but Jackie took me to a, a stanky tofu. I, by the way, I've been trying to... It's called stinky tofu, but I was pitching to the Taiwanese, maybe making it a little bit more urban. Call it stanky tofu. Mm-hmm. 
and and oh maybe even opening a stand called Yo Tofu Stank. <laughs> Damn bitch, Yo Tofu Stank. That tofu, that it ta- and then you tasted it and it tasted exactly like it smelled. It's kind of foot like, but it's good foot. <laughs> like I I did like it in the end. I thought it was Ew, pretty you, oh. You like ate like four pieces. It was pretty good, actually. It, ha- it has. It's like um. And was yours fried in duck blood? You, no, or soaked no. In I, duck I, blood? I had vegan t- stank, and I. It's, it was vegan. It, what I will say, okay. stanky tofu is to tofu, as blue cheese is to uh uh like American to Jack cheese. No, blue cheese is better. Well, that's think. just because you have a Western tongue. I I being more of an Eastern man, um. I, I don't see it that way. But the stink was like... Stank. <clears throat> the stink was like... Because I love tofu. Yeah. But I could not eat but that. But you don't love stink. No. Um, I thought our... Oh, cha- but what was funny about it is uh, I did stop smelling it at the yeah, restaurant. Because we had to sit away. down at the stinky tofu restaurant. Stinky goes away. It did go away. And even our kids said it went away. What's the best thing you ate in Taiwan, Natasha? I like that dessert that was like sweet taro ball soup. Oh, you, you like could the, get it hot or Oh, you like Grandma Lau's taro balls? Yeah, I just thought that was such a cute way to eat a dessert. And yeah. it was like warm and not that sweet. Chunks of ice with uh, glutinous taro balls floating. And like the, It was like a <laughs> Halloween game. And the taro balls kind of tasted like gnocchi, but yeah. they were like they they were like very fresh taste like yeah, they just had like a really nice texture. I mean, uh, but I probably I like to share it with three people. I We'll say well, we, that was when we went to Jiufen and we went to Shuofen before that. So we did a double tour of Jiufen and Shuofen. And uh, sh- in Shuofen, they are known for their sky lanterns. Mm. Uh, and we did do a sky lantern ritual where you basically go to this uh, small town uh, in, in the mountains, I think, or in a valley somewhere in Taiwan. And there's a there is a railroad track that runs through the small shopping uh, district in Shuofen. And the main, their main economy is lighting lanterns on fire and watching people release them into the sky. That's the main economy of the town. And so all day long, they have like a conveyor belt of flaming hot air balloons Mm -hmm. with like well wishes and and luck symbols drawn on these sky lanterns. And then we asked like, what do they do? Like, aren't there a lot of fires? And they were like, yeah. 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 We got that happens. (laughs) And then... Uh, our kid was like what about uh like litter where do they go and he told us jackie my boy jackie told us that they employ old retired people to tromp through the jungle and find the discarded sky lanterns and bring them back for like a recycling fee Mm -hmm. so they're like the economy is also in the recycling of not only the sky lanterns but of the labor of the old people so they're tromping through a jungle looking for an old sky lantern. So somewhere out there, an old Taiwanese man came across a sky lantern that was plugging our Netflix as a joke dates because that's what I wrote on my sky lantern. Well, listen, <clears throat> I'm glad that uh, we were able to set off the sky lanterns. Me too. And um, Are you I, about to roll into the episode? Yeah. Because I was going to say in the final analysis. Yes. I hi- I highly recommend Taiwan as a vacation destination. And by the way, it's all because of you. Natasha one day came in with an article, like a real white lady, from the New York Times <laughs> travel section <laughs> saying, have you no, ever... Th- have it, you was ever th- on, it was on a plane, I saw it. Have you ever thought about going to Taiwan? I had never thought about it. And we read this article, and within an hour of reading the article, uh, we had purchased our tickets, and we're going on a random adventure. I just heard about this. It was just very inexpensive, so it made it easy. It was dope. Taiwan's dope. Good food, friendly people. It's like tropical China, and no spitting. Mm-hmm. There's no spitting. They do have the uh, squat toilets, and I will say I have some disappointments about our trip. We didn't see Sun Moon Lake. Mm-hmm. We didn't see um, the Taroko Gorge or whatever. But my biggest regret is that I never had the courage to shit in a squat toilet. I didn't understand the plumbing dynamics. No, no one is expecting you to shit in a squat toilet. We had a bidet in our hotel. We're bidets all the way, honey. But You know what they should do is squat bidets. <laughs> Nobody's thinking about that. Oh, man. But I want to shit in a squat toilet. So, Taiwan, if you'll have me back. Oh. Just, just to shit in the squat toilet. 
I think that would be a really cool cultural experience. Can I just roast Moshe for one second? You, you can try. Moshe on vacation, you have to tell us if this is normal. He wants to see every monument that anyone has ever written an article about. And so um, it's uh, very exhausting. Oh, cool. So you're not really roasting me as much as just (laughs) insulting me? No, I wanted to know what people... I'm curious if people are like, what's the benefit of... How do you balance that? Um, What would you have done? uh, When you're in a new country, what, are you going to sit around a hotel and order quiche? (laughs) I mean, what's your plan? (laughs) I would be like, hey, do you want to see the Chiang Kai-shek memorial, the primary uh, uh, icon here in Taipei? You're like, no... (laughs) It's just, well, why are we here? Why didn't we stay home? Well, because we like then traveled through like some cool forests and went on cool hikes. And like, I don't know, like I don't need to like race across town to see every memorial. This is the thing. Natasha did no work to, to plan for the vacation. I got the hotel. That's true. What I'm saying is you specifically asked me, make the itinerary. Then I made the itinerary. And she's like, whoa, busy bee much? What are we doing over here? Oh, there's this place called um, in Taipei called. Oh my uh, god! Called uh, oh shit! I gotta look. It's basically the Times Square of Taipei. Moshe uh, takes me to this place. It's like full of like H and M's and like. She um, didn't. There's no way for you to Dave even, and Buster. There's no and way. He for, wants to like explore the the like 42nd Street it's the of main, Taiwan it, it's, at 9 p.m. with a child. It's the main <laughs> square in Taipei. It's like literally the main place that people say to go. Now, am I am I vouching for its like cool authenticity? No, but I want to go. And the minute we get there, Natasha like turns her nose up and goes like, not for me. And basically starts, you know what it was? Hmm. Y- your attitude was that of a piece of stanky tofu, t- <laughs> to be honest. And I'm like, I want to see it. And then she gets our child to say, I don't want to. I didn't get her to say that. that That's the thing you don't understand. No, she was like, I want to get out of here. Anyone normal would have wanted to get out of there. Anyone normal. The most, the most popular and populous part of the, of Taipei. You like Times Square? It's not that I like Times Square, but if I was, if I'm I'm Taiwanese, if I'm Taiwanese and I've never been to America, I've never been to New York City. Yeah. I'm going to go to Times Square. Am I going to go, wow, this is clearly the hippest part of New York? No, but but it, imagine that. You know yeah, what? Imagine, I'm, I'm not going to go to Times Square. Imagine that. You, two Taiwanese nationals. They've never been to America. They go to New York, and, and the husband's like, I heard about this Times Square. Skip we should, it. We should go check it out. And they get there, and one and a half minutes later, the, the <laughs> wife is like, let's go immediately. I don't like it. Let's go. And the, the, I mean, uh, uh, try to imagine that. Okay. Imagine well, that experience. Please weigh in. Let the, us know the, how you like to travel. The fact that you think... Are you a Natasha or a Moshe? The fact that you think you didn't influence our child to say, I want to go home is hilarious to me. I didn't. Really? You don't think you have any influence on our child when you're like putting your uh, dead fox stole over your nose and uh, putting like a, a nosegay that you've brought back from the south of France as we walk through. I mean, that's not literally true, but that was your attitude. All right. Well, listen, would love to hear you weigh in, but it was awesome. We had a great time. Taiwan recommend. Moshe did not eat duck blood. 10 out of 10. Good. A lot of bang for your buck. Tropical China. What more do you want? Noodles, mung bean, taro balls, Mochi, fish, fish balls, boba. Ooh, peanut roll, ice cream with a crepe with ice cream, peanut ice cream, peanut brittle and cilantro in it. That was a good tea. That was a good dish. Stank ass tofu. Lots of good tea. Some good ass almond milk, some cranberry juice. We had a lot of really fun and interesting, uh, interesting stuff. All right, let's start our episode. Natasha, fresh back from Taiwan. Let's take, let's, a, let's, let's take a let's take a call. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. As I get older, I got to tell you, I've been thinking a lot about getting more serious about my skincare. And I found a product that I freaking love. It's called One Skin. Listen, if you're tired of cycling through ineffective skincare trends and overcomplicated routines, then I am so excited to tell you about today's sponsor, One Skin. Their products make it easy to keep your skin healthy while looking and feeling your best. No complicated routine, no multiple step protocols, just simple, scientifically validated solutions. Now, as a mom, I don't want, I am not, never going to do a five step skincare routine again. As a, I, as a mom. I used to do that when I was like single or just with you and I'd go on the road and I'd do all my serums. You sleep with a waiter. <laughs> 
And then you do the five step routine. I just can't do it anymore. I'm like two steps and I'm out. This doesn't need two. It's just one. The secret is One Skin's proprietary OS01 peptide. It's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. Now, I don't want any of those things. I don't want lines, I don't want wrinkles, and I don't want thinning skins. And they've got several studies to back it up. I've been using their products for a while, and I have to say, I don't have wrinkles. How do I not have wrinkles? Well, don't take our word for it. One Skin has over 4,000 five-star reviews and were recognized by Fast Company as one of the most innovative brands in 2024. For a limited time, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your first One Skin purchase using the code HONEYMOON when you check out at oneskin.co. Try One Skin and enjoy younger, healthier skin without all the extra steps. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code HONEYMOON at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code HONEYMOON. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Okay. We're going to call Rachel, Rachel in America's Gem, Cleveland, Ohio. There's a cool hotel there. That's like a it's like from the 1800s. Oh, you mean the one in the mall? Yeah, it's a mall, but they had it's, it's like the world's first mall or something. It's in the world's first mall and it's like a wooden mall from with like a huge ceiling looks like Grand Central Station from yeah. like the 1800s. Yes. I like staying there even though It is a cute little place. Yeah. All right, here she comes, the one and only Rachel Hi, Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you guys? Oh, we're fantastic. It's sunny and bright here in Los Angeles. How's Cleveland? Um, it's really gray. Um, are you friends? It's with warmer than it has been, but it's very gray. When outside. you say warmer, you mean like you guys are almost to forty degrees? It's in the forties. <laughs> yep. Uh, are you friends? With I'm from bon around that bon area. Bone Thugs and Harmony. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. You all know. Everybody knows them. Yeah, in Cleveland, of course. Okay, that's great. That's great. Tell them I said hi, if you would. <laughs> I will. Friend. Yeah. Uh, how can we help, Rachel? What's going on? So, um, thanks for having me, you guys. I'm really excited. I'm nervous. So if I'm talking like fast, just think to yourself, um, what would Busy Bone do? Is he in Bone? Thank you for that. You're right. Thugs and Harmony. He's in Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah, <laughs> I believe. I believe I'm right. It's Bone Thugs and Harmony. Bone Thugs and Harmony. You not know Bone Thugs and Harmony? No, honey, I don't. Really? You gotta come to Cleveland, Natasha. <laughs> and I'm gonna miss everybody. And I'm gonna miss everybody. It's a thuggish, ruggish bone. No, nothing. Now I know where our, our daughter you gets at her the voice. Crossroads. <laughs> I have a beautiful singing voice. Hold on, I'll do my real singing voice. It's the thuggish, ruggish bone. That's pretty crooner-like. No, it's very off-key. It's off the key. thuggish, ruggish bone. No, you're not a good singer, honey. I'm Why sorry. would you say this? Well, you're so mean, Natasha. It's crazy. <laughs> All right. You guys, yeah. I love it. Yeah, we. you should try living in it. <laughs> okay, so what's up? We're at a real crossroads, Natasha and I. See you at yeah. the crossroads. That's another bone thug. This is going to be in a classic. compilation after we get divorced. See you at the crossroads. <laughs> okay, listen, let's so hear her be problem. A part of it. We're just trying to break um, down your nervousness a little bit with my singing voice. It's working. Good. It's working. And the tension between you guys is like helping me a little too. It's oh, making yeah. you feel I'm better kidding, about your life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. It's like, how can I avoid a relationship like yours? <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> no, I like it. I do. I like I do love watching all this dynamic. It's fun. Oh, thank you. Who do you like better? Um. All right, let's move on. I could feel a Natasha. <laughs> I love you of, both equally. I, Who? Could, how could I ever decide? That is a good. Um. Good okay. So my husband and I are trying to get pregnant with our first baby right now. Hell yeah, doggy stuff. Um, yeah, I mean all of it all mostly. Nice. <laughs> Cycle stuff. Um, you got to wait for those three days. Oh, those three days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and unfortunately we have had two miscarriages this year. Sorry. Um, and I know you guys went through IVF, like your own fertility stuff. Um, and I, after the experiences with the miscarriages, I've been feeling really like, I don't know, out of control of my body down on like the confidence I have in my body and my fertility. Um, and I was just wondering how, like, I know you guys have mentioned your first transfer didn't work, right? 
That's right. Yeah. I was wondering how you like had the strength and like, I don't know, willingness to go forward with that after like a really disappointing outcome mm. to like keep trying. I'll take this, Natasha. Um, <laughs> Well, I think it's shifting. For me, I had to shift my outlook a little bit and I had to think of myself having a baby no matter what it took. And so if this one, that one, I'd move on to plan B, plan C, plan D, you know? And so I think just knowing if you can try to have some faith and visualize yourself with the end goal. Like I used to walk around New York like wishing for a mid-size agent. <laughs> that was my big dream because I had heard people talk about that. Like, yeah, you know, I'm not with like the big agents, but like mid-size, that's how you'll get all the auditions, blah, blah, blah. You know, so I was like, okay, that's what I need. But it's like, no, I didn't need an agent. I needed like a job. I needed to make money. I needed to like have creative fulfillment in some way. Like I wasn't trying to get the agent, you know? So I think for me, it's like expanding having a really strong visual in front of you if you can try to think about it and detail it in your mind and pray for it if that's something you do and just know that it it's going to happen but it might not happen exactly how you want it to happen and not have be so attached to each outcome but I don't know I'm saying that having never really had a late term abortion or anything so abortion. i mean i'm sorry uh miscarriage but you did have i mean but i mean it happened so fast i was able to move on very easily right. like i have friends who've given birth to two stillbirths you know i mean it's like i don't know right what happens in that situation or how one recovers no but i think what you're saying natasha is really wise like because pregnancy is so difficult for women uh and miscarriage is so common and like thank you for being willing to bring it up like I I, I I I know that a lot of times I, I feel weird talking about it because obviously it's not something that my body goes through or is at risk of but like the the desire to like uh, uh, the instinct to feel like shame or keep it a secret is like a thing that pl I know plagues women that are uh, struggling with fertility and like talking about miscarriage and normalizing it is is I think brave and and, and important and like what you're talking about is because it's so difficult. It can be so difficult that keeping your eyes on like visualizing the the goal rather than focusing on the the supposed failures of each uh, uh, of each segment of the journey is like important. And like again, easy for me to say because I haven't had to experience it. But I know that when we uh, when the first uh, when the first try didn't take and we were down to like the final egg, like it felt like a tragedy. And then, um, having met our child, you go, Oh my God, I, this is again, easy to say, but you go, Oh my God, thank God. The first pregnancy didn't take because this was the person that we were supposed to have been living with. And we were supposed to have met and we were never going to have two kids. So if that pregnancy had taken, we would have had this different ass child living in the house. And like everything is, um, feels correct in hindsight like in rear view mirror but for some people that might not be the case i mean i don't think i think that i think i feel like that i think that like typically that's how i feel i mean it's like you said it's hard to realize like in the middle of it but i have i mean listening i feel like i've heard you say that before like thank god the first one didn't work out because like i want this child i've been trying to like visualize that and i have quoted you guys to like friends i've been like oh they've like you know I don't know. So I think I feel like that. I'm just like, oh, the idea of trying again. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, I can say that Natasha, you might not even remember that. Maybe you remember this, but I remember Natasha being extremely uh, emotionally fraught and troubled through the process. And that was really difficult to, to watch because she was doing all of the work. And, you know, and I couldn't really, I could help and be supportive and you know, jab a syringe into her ass. But like, you know, it was really her, her labor that I had to kind of sit in, in uh, awe and honor of. And it was really difficult for you. To talk. You might have blanked that out, but like, it was very emotional. It was very difficult. And we just, I was very much in awe of you just continuing to move forward. Well, thank you. And I will say that, um, my daughter, you were reminding me, like, you're like, yeah, I've tried that and it's not working. 
I visualized it and didn't happen. <laughs> um, yeah, I quote you sometimes in my visualizations and they're still not working. Um, Anything no, else? <laughs> but I will say like you're kind of reminding me of my daughter right now because she's really kind of on to like maybe magic doesn't work because she keeps like wishing to fly and it's not happening. And it's like, I'm not exactly sure how to break it to her. And like, you know, she's like every year for her birthday, she's wishing for special powers. And like, well, the problem, the, no, but let me just finish. The thing with you is the thing you're wishing for actually can happen. So at least you have that going for you. Yeah. You know, so I think that's something to really, if it's happened for others, it can happen for me. And I think that's a really important thing. But the problem is that you keep telling our child when she wishes for powers is like you keep saying or don't focus on the day-to-day failures but focus on the goal which is flying and you'll get there someday and that's (laughs) to me that's setting really unrealistic (laughs) expectations but yeah i think natasha's right like this is an attainable goal by the way attainable goal doesn't always happen does it cost money i mean there's a lot of barriers my my old college professor once said to me something i've i've thought about my whole life he goes nothing ever works out the way you think it's going to but everything always works out i mean obviously that's not true for everybody but like what does work out mean who knows who knows what that actually means you know and that's why i say like like things become destiny in in the rearview mirror only right like it's not that it it it, it can only be when looking back and going ah this was the way it was supposed to be that's like the only way it can work and so like yeah focusing on on that and and like you know, honoring the fact that you're, you know, that your body is telling you things that make you feel like a lack, lack of confidence or, you know, a, a, whatever it is that you're feeling, like honoring that feeling and not saying like, I can't feel that anymore. Just going like, yeah, it's like meditation, right? It's like uh, when your mind wanders, you go, okay, my mind's wandering. Okay, I'm feeling shame. Okay, I'm feeling a loss, a loss of confidence, but I'm going to continue to get back to my breathing like that's what what meditation says get back to your breathing like i'm gonna get back to this journey as difficult as it is and like honoring your pain and and honoring how difficult uh the things that you've been through are and then saying though they are difficult let me take a deep breath and continue to take the next step i think that's the goal all right well good luck to you thanks guys you're gonna get (laughs) you're gonna get there we don't know where there is but you're gonna get there you will get there, yeah. whatever that means. Yeah, your skin's too glowing for you to be that concerned. Yeah, that's Oh my true. God, you guys. <laughs> and always think about what um, what the bone thug said, which is that I'm going to miss everybody and we'll see you at the crossroads. <laughs> You're so right. I'm so glad I called. Yeah, <laughs> I am. We're dropping wisdom here. All right, good luck, good luck, good luck. Bye. Thanks, guys. Have Bye. a good one. You too. Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. Don't you think it'd be nice when our kid's a little older, she gets a whole book of amazing, beautiful stories that we wrote about our lives so that she could really get to know us? That would be amazing, but how could I ever do all of that? Well, for us, it's different because we're published authors and she can just check out our books. (laughs) But if you're not, you can get yourself a StoryWorth account and you can make a gift like that happen for your kids or you can get your parents to write that gift for you. Here's how it works. Each week... StoryWorth emails your loved one a thought-provoking question that you get to help pick. This is like a mom's wet dream. It's also a kid's wet dream because I lost a, a father young at 20 years old. And one of the big things that I wish I could do is ask him a bunch of questions about himself, mm. questions I wasn't old enough to ask when I was young. StoryWorth makes that writing process a breeze. Those questions get answered. All your loved one needs to do is respond to that email that they get sent with a story. Long or short, it doesn't matter. Then you'll be emailed a copy of your loved one's response as they are submitted over the course of the year. You'll get to enjoy their retelling of the stories you already know or be surprised by stories you never heard before. And after that year of fun, StoryWorth compiles your loved one's stories and photos into a beautiful keepsake hardcover book that you'll be able to share and revisit for generations to come. You can even keep a copy of the book yourselves. Give all the moms in your life a unique, heartfelt gift you'll all cherish for years. Story worth. And in fact, I'm going to give my mom this instead of my book because my book, I think, made her angry. This is something... This will make her joyful. (laughs) This is something you can really tailor to your parents. Right now, you can save $10 off of your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash honeymoon. That's storyworth.com slash honeymoon to save $10 on your first purchase purchase okay we're gonna call Susanna in Sweden Ooh, love it a Swedish uh, co-ed 
Hopefully. I wonder if she plays volleyball. Beach volleyball? You know? Honey. What do you mean, honey? Your idea of like, you think she's out there playing vo- beach volleyball? Like a blonde lady. woman? Drinking this coffee? This is just a dumb fantasy Fending about... Fending off murderers? A blonde woman. No, watch. Watch when she comes up. Here she comes. Just you wait. Here she is in five, four, three, two, one. Susanna. Oh yeah, she fits the fantasy. Hey. <laughs> are you are you are you Swedish? Or are I you am in Swedish. Sweden? Amazing. How much beach yeah. you guys are so perverted. Every time a man says what's your nationality, he's like assessing if he would fuck you. I am not. I'm That's a That's what it man. means. Uh, how much beach volleyball do you play? <laughs> Oh, I actually heard you talking about it before. Oh, <laughs> she was on. Busted. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of like listening a little. And volleyball, uh, no, I've never played volleyball. No, no one has. I don't know why he's I suggesting a, this. I honestly think it's a stereotype. Uh, from the 80s. From the something. 80s, from the 1980s. I don't know why, but yeah. there was like the Swedish beach volleyball team or something in the 80s. That's probably porn you're watching, oh. honey. No, no. Also, I just learned all about, um, I just watched a documentary on the assassination of the Swedish prime minister. Quite quite a tale. Yeah. Oh, we don't know who did it. It's I know. like the greatest mystery in Sweden. I think I think we do know who did it, but yeah, I think his wife pointed it out. Who who bought? They were uh, so. Yeah, he got away with with it. I think. Do you think that you're more enlightened than like Natasha and I, just by virtue of being Swedish? Do you feel like just kind of a little bit more educated and enlightened? Be honest. Um, <laughs> worldly. You feel more worldly. Just be honest. Come from the gut. <laughs> I feel like that's, uh, I guess, probably not. But uh, I feel like that's how Americans feel of Europe or Europeans. We don't think about it... Europe. We just think about stuff we want to buy. Sweden. No, no. Sw- no, we think about, you're, you're right. We Americans think of specifically Scandinavia as everyone's, oh. everyone's happy and everyone's smart. Yeah. No, that's not, that's and not free true. Free childcare. Free childcare. You keep your babies in the strollers in the snow. I think about that sometimes. Yeah. Put them in little boxes well, to sleep in. Yeah, sponsored look, by the government. Yeah. Oh, we had a gu- we had a Swedish box. We put government. a child in a, in a Swedish box. Oh, yeah. I think I think maybe Sweden. Oh, I shouldn't ruin your idea of Sweden because we are like. I don't know. It's like we used to. It used to be great here. It's still pretty good, I guess, but. Like we're we're oh it's my bread sorry I have bread in my oven okay oh yeah it sounds pretty tough over there in Sweden you're fucking baking bread in real time oh my god (laughs) it used to be great but now we can barely bake our own bread (laughs) for lunch I guess it's good it's all relative I don't know because I don't know what life is like for you in 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 the US I have no idea I'll tell you what it's like when you walk outside. 40 men point a gun at you and you have to dodge bullets to get down the street. Everywhere you go, there's gunfire. Everywhere. No, you call Lyft and Uber and someone comes and brings you food in like plastic containers and then you I pay $90 have, for it. I think they have Lyft and Uber in, uh, oh. in Sweden as no, well. No, I understand that, but I'm just saying living, have Uber. living a simpler life, being able to bake bread in the morning and you know, like that takes time. You can't you be like rushing. But it's late. It's at 10, it's 10 p.m. Oh, I guess. Natasha's yeah. never heard of time zones. This is a first for well, her. Well, even baking bread at 10 p.m. is it's impressive. Even better. Honestly, you should start a political movement in Sweden called Make yeah? Make uh, Make Sweden <laughs> Great Again. Yeah, we, I should because like, I have, it's, it's such a hard question because all I think about is what you compare it to. Mm-hmm. And but I do. I have lived in a few different countries in Europe. So I have to say like the living standard is really good actually yeah. in Sweden. Yeah, so do you want to take your bread good. out before you ask your question? Yeah, 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 go get your I bread. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, go get your perfect out. Swedish bread. We'll just make fun of you while you go take the bread out. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, <laughs> she's never even paid for major health care issues. <laughs> what well, a fool. She's kind of making it sound like it's not all it's cracked well, up to be. Well, I think, I've all, I don't necessarily, I think of like the Finns and the Norwegians as really happy, and the Swedish are like more serious, but they're also the power. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the problem. That's yeah. why, yeah, that's why I, I emailed you. I think it's, 
sometimes people are a bit too serious in Sweden. Yeah. You right. guys are like immigrated because my mother is Swedish and she grew up in Minnesota oh. and it's full of Swedish people. And that's where American Gothic came from. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. so those people, I believe those farmers in the frowns are Swedish. Right. All right. How can we help? Yeah. Tell us your issue. OK, so. <clears throat> Actually, this comes as a total surprise for me to be on this podcast. I just sent an email last night. Uh, like, uh, I just, yeah, I just never thought I would be here. To well, listen, talking. when we so, when we get a, a at at S W or whatever it is that your internet browsers <laughs> default to email, we yeah. we get back to them quickly. Yeah, that's, I I figured that it would be exotic to be like yeah. scattered. Again, your email maybe. just so everybody listening moved knows, you to the bump to the front of the queue yeah her email just so everybody yeah, knows is yeah. swedish baker at sweden dot sx dot slash EU volleyball slash volleyball slash um coffee slash uh let her tell crime. her story all right go ahead okay she said yeah, it was sure. long i'm prepping myself <laughs> actually it's, it's not it's not that thought through maybe but it was kind of spontaneous uh so I just, yeah, I just wrote an email yesterday. I was very tired. There's a lot of pollen here. I don't know if you have it in LA. I have a lot of allergies. So. I thought you said, I honestly thought you were saying there was too many Polish people in Sweden. Polish. <laughs> but pollen, <laughs> pollen, got it. Pollen, I don't, yeah, I don't know. They're I calling it the, the uh, allergy apocalypse. I've heard this. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. There are some Polish people at my job, but yeah, they're, they're, they're nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. what's up with the pollen? Is what is is it making you cough? Because our daughter won't stop coughing. Oh really? Yeah, it really. I have some asthma as well, so it's really yeah, it's making me cough. And um, the the eyes, you should check mm. her eyes is like, and the nose. The, I don't know how to say this in English. It's the terms are say it in it's Swedish. Not. We want to hear it. Uh, okay, so jag jag får asthma och är väldigt trött i näsan. <laughs> That's classic. Okay, all right. Classic. So there's a lot of pollen in the air. Yeah. So. A lot of pollen. So I was very tired when I wrote this email. So yeah, my, so my question was just kind of in a tired mood and very spontaneous. Okay. So and my question was or is actually like about my uh, my single life, I suppose my my love life. I don't know what to call it. Because I don't know where I should go to meet a fun guy. Mm. Like I kind of like uh, given up on finding a fun person, a fun guy. And uh, as I wrote in my email, I'm kind of looking for a mix of uh, Ethan Hawke in Before Sunrise. <laughs> if you see him. <laughs> so not Ethan Hawke, <laughs> but Ethan Hawke in one specific role. Yeah, yeah, not okay. Ethan Hawke, but his character in Before Sunrise. Okay, okay. Even and? though he's... he's Sometimes it's a bit too cheesy for me, maybe because that's maybe it's a weird thing. I don't know. But yeah, Ethan Hawke and Larry David and Lena Cohen. <laughs> I want something, a mix of that. <laughs> Well, okay, I can already oh tell you what God. your problem is here. You're like our friend. Yeah. You're like our friend who said he wants a, a a a ten who went to Harvard. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so, but it doesn't have to be like this, though. It's just an example. I'm, I don't think I'm. <laughs> you want a comedic genius who's as hot as the hottest heartthrob <laughs> from your childhood, who also is like a deep dark poet musician and so, oh, and a Jew. Yeah. Mm. No, yeah, we don't have a lot of Jewish. That's people your problem. Here. You say you say I live in Sweden. Yeah. And I'm looking for a Leonard Cohen, Larry David type. I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I think you might be fishing in the wrong. Yeah, fjord. maybe move to New York. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's part of my email because I fishing like, I'm in the wrong fjord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so is it in fact? Can I say what you need to do? Oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, lower your standards. That is true. I, I, yes, I know, I know. And I do, I try to not like focus too much on appearance and too much on, I don't know, it doesn't have to be a perfect person, but I just want someone who's like easy to talk to and who's very funny. Yeah. Like that's like the main thing. And that's, I think that's impossible to find. What, what, just do you think, do you think that it, you want to be entertained in your relationship? Yes. I and do I too. want her. You want yeah, them either singing you a love song that he wrote, like you mm -hmm. want to be Suzanne. No, or... no, 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 no. <laughs> that, that, no. <laughs> that, it doesn't happen. That, no, okay, that would that would be. You may, want I don't, it. Who doesn't yeah. want it? Yeah, maybe that's why I'm named Suzanne. It's it's not. It should be Suzanne, but it's because my dad loved Lena Cohen. But oh wow, it's so song you... actually. 
exactly. So, yeah. So part it, of my- is there something cultural you feel like with the, the boys that you meet in Sweden that it is like a s- so. more serious place? So have you ever thought about like um, trying to date like, you know, expats and people that are in Sweden from other countries, like maybe trying to, you know, go, go get some cultural yeah. exchange programs going on? Yeah, I had thought about it. And I yeah, the last person because I live next to Copenhagen. Mm-hmm. So it's the very it's like 20 minutes from Copenhagen. Uh-huh. Where, so I the last yeah, I have been dating. I've been I'm open to different cultures and nationalities. And I've been dating but no polls, no polls. No, Paul, no. I'm going to help you out as you as you start dating funny people or finding funny people to date. I think you should treat them being funny like you treat the looks because there's like you can't lean on them making you laugh. You have to make sure that you think they're a good person, that your values align, that you like the way they treat their family, that, you know, like all of those things. Just make sure that you're not like. In ba- like it's got to have that balance. So if you, because I used to think of like funny as like the highest realm. So I was like, if yeah. you're funny, you know, that's, that's enough. That's enough. That's everything. But it really is like compatibility. Like so much is important beyond mm. that. Even though it feels like it's not a superficial thing. Mm. Okay. That's my advice. That's yeah. smart. Where have you been? Where have you been trying to find partners? I just see her with some deadbeat comic. I know. (laughs) It was like kind of funny. (laughs) Treats her like shit. Okay, so uh, what? Yeah, that's the other thing. I don't know anymore. I have. uh, I don't know where to. Well, uh, before it was like when I was younger. Was I guess parties and mutual friends. uh, But nowadays, uh, everyone's like not everyone, but uh, almost everyone is like taken and uh, have kids and are married. uh, So. It's not really, and, and it doesn't work at my job. It's like not an option because I have a very female-dominated uh, job. Is mm-hmm. that what it's called? Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to start making efforts, making more efforts, going mm-hmm. out, finding things to do, looking cute, going to things that are yeah. the kinds of things that John, you like. A John Waters movie. You can laugh at me all you want, honey, but um, but you know, like uh, music, live music. Yeah. You like go a concert. Or like play something. I'm or? here's what I. Will, she needs to get out there. She's hot. I know she's hot. I and would, who wants to waste their time online? It's I so think, annoying. Well, see, but I was going to. I'm only on the dating apps. I, it's just the dating apps, and it's not. Sorry, I was interrupting. No, that's okay. Yeah. Wait, Wait, you. She's are, alternating between coffee and wine. I, she's <laughs> living a life that is so superior to us, and then she goes into the next room and grabs her free nebulizer from the government. Um. Wait. Next you like? I don't know what that is. You know what when you have asthma, you know the little the <laughs> Oh yeah, my inhale my inhaler. You know, you know, Most people water? call it an inhaler. Yeah, in America to get an inhaler, you have to give the government a car. Or, yeah. Or a gold yeah, bar. I, Wait. Now actually I get it for free now. Of uh, course you do. We know. Apps. Wait, I, you I, are I, on the apps? You are on dating apps? I am. I am on the apps. And what's and wrong with uh, that? What what are you not getting any funny banter on the apps? No, I am not. I, I, oh, well, it's, I don't know. I feel like I, I mean, I, well, I've been on a lot of uh, dates from the apps and it's not they, like they're nice people and everything, but I just feel like oh, we, we don't really, we don't, I don't know. We don't click. It's not just, see, I just need a conversation to be more laid back and fun and like interesting. And I feel like it's a bit Don't, boring. you're putting too much pressure on them. Yeah. Take uh, breath. Okay. Take a breath, yeah. take a step back, yeah. drink more wine, maybe less coffee, yeah. talk less on the dates, go out more. See, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what my friend and I, because I don't know, is that a female thing? I suppose that we usually take Fill in all kids. the space. Fill, you're filling yes, in all the yeah. space. That's not a, I guess that's a female problem, no? Well, I, uh, I, I struggle with it as well. Yeah, I it's never so talk. Hard. I'm very laid back and I, I you'll never hear me talk. I just but you're not it. talking to fill in gaps, Moshe. You're talking to impart... Uh, Deep your, wisdom? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think you you should start dating foreigners. I swear to God, I'm not making it up. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, probably. I, I yeah. think it's it, you got to shake it up a little bit. Look for an Australian mm-hmm. bloke. Look for a... Oh my God, I'm just now riding with an Australian guy. Actually. See, it's li- listen, yeah. listen. Maybe I think I what you that. want is not a sense of humor, but you want a different sense of humor than the Swedish sense of humor. You want like a, yes. si- a yes. sillier yeah. man. And I think yeah. looking American, looking American, looking 
British looking Australian. I think yeah. that could be your thing. And you could even yeah. you could even seek it out, you know, on the apps. You could seek out seek you, I mean, I don't think you should go hang out in hostel lobbies cuz that feels like <laughs> kind of a loser attraction I, almost, I think I'm right there. <laughs> She's but, got a job. I mean, come on. You're not too old. You know how she stoked, doesn't need a man who you know like has a traveling I would have been bunk when bed. I was traveling Europe in hostels and if she was in the lobby going I'm here looking for an American boy, but I think who, who can make me laugh. Yeah, I think a cultural a cultural <laughs> yeah. sh shift could be cool for you, just by virtue of the yes. fact that you're calling an American podcast for this makes me think yeah. like you've got an affinity, and, and your reference is Larry David it means you've got an affinity yeah. for like the American style of banter. I think that's your I secret. So, Are yeah. you going to Burning Man 2025? Because Moshe <laughs> might meet you there. <laughs> yeah. You can wait till then. I, I, I would say. I, I, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I would say I'm a bit of a mix of Leonard Cohen and Larry David. Oh. I don't really. Have, I've heard you sing, honey. I don't really think you're. Well, actually, Suzanne Leonard. <laughs> takes us down and something by the river and he feeds her. He? She feeds him black Can't coffee even get the context and, and of reads. It. The girl Come with on. the dragon tattoo. <laughs> Let's play some beach volleyball and do other Swedish things. They call me the Swedish baker. Yar -ba -bar, bar 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 Is the Swedish baker a pretty big figure in Swedish society? The Swedish chef? It, it, the Swedish chef? Oh, the Swedish Muppet. The Muppet. The guy. Muppet, yeah. Do you guys, is he like a cultural icon? I've heard people talk about him, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think people know about him. But he it, was the prime minister for a while, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. Practically speaking, you have to make an effort mm -hmm. or two a day yeah. and yeah. figure out what you can do and just make some efforts. Just be active about it. It's almost like losing weight or whatever it is. You know, that it's going to take a little bit of like mental focus. You know, I think what do they say in AA? If nothing changes, nothing changes. You got to make a couple little changes. Be a little more active, yeah. like Natasha is saying. Maybe try going on some dates with some foreign boys because I think that I, going I, out of your comfort zone. Yeah, going out of your comfort zone. That's what it's all about. Actually, I've been dating a lot of different nationalities. Uh, never American or yeah. like that. a lot, a lot of French guys. Because oh I, my god, <laughs> that's your problem. They're not funny. <laughs> no, they're not funny. They're not because I lived in Paris. That's and then I. Yeah, a lot of French. Oh, Canadian. I tried Canadian. Canadians yeah. are funny. To be to, to no credit, more French. To credit the French a little bit, know, there's nobody better at building an invisible wall on a date. Like they're <laughs> they're some of the best. They're trapped in a box. Um, I think American. Yeah, I think that's your secret. Where American. I, I never, I never dated an American. Greatest never. boys on earth. Number one, baby. She just American changed her one. filters. Oh, <laughs> All right. Well, listen. We have to go pick up our kid, and you don't really have a problem. So, <laughs> no, I'm just no. You know what? I it's not true because it's easy for me to say I have a kid, I have a family, and you uh -uh. want a family and a husband. Jesus I have a husband. Christ. She's like, how do I find a man? You're like, yeah, I got. I don't have problems. I got a kid. I got a family. I got a career. I got a house. I got a dog. I got two dogs. I, I got, got a podcast. You got a man. <laughs> I got a man. You got a funny so I man. understand, yeah. and I got a funny man, and, mm -hmm. uh, and a poet. Yeah, yeah. I think this is combining Natasha's advice with mine is your secret. Get into some new spaces. Get off the uh, maybe get off the apps because they're not working for you. Get on the Reddit. You know, uh, r slash Leonard Cohen. But take fan. a two week break from going. Try to meet people not on the apps. Yeah, just try it. Okay. And try to find some yeah. some some foreign boys. And and that I think that that you're going to be in good stead. All right. Okay. All right. Well, good we'll luck. We'll come visit you. Yeah, sure. You're welcome. All right. Thank you for Thank calling. You so much. Bye. Stig Larson. Stig Larson. Hey, Dola. Okay, Stig Larson. Stig Larson. <laughs> you could tell that um she gets a lot of dates. Oh, she's yeah, she's funny. She's clever. She's cute. What more do you? And she bakes her own bread. Sign me up, please. Yeah. When's the last time you baked bread? I made hollow and it was like a rock. Yeah, but it was the rock of my heart. Thank you, honey. All right, well, why don't I, we want to listen to some secrets. Okay, let's do it. Hi, guys. I have a secret that I'm a little bit ashamed of, but not that bad. Not that ashamed. My secret is that I don't really feel bad for people who have eating disorders. Oh I do feel bad for people who have, like, binge eating disorders. <laughs> that seems pretty rough. But for people who have, like, anorexia and bulimia, I feel like being afraid of being fat makes you a vain and shitty person because a lot of people are fat and live fulfilled lives. So if you're so afraid of being fat that you're like killing yourself, 
I'm like, you need to grow up a little bit. Okay, that's it. This okay, log- I'm calling back. I just left a voicemail about how I don't feel bad about people with eating disorders. <laughs> I don't feel bad for them. I want to clarify. If someone has anorexia because they're, like, um, afraid of eating or, like, you know, they have, like, contamination anxiety or if she they have bulimia Googled because, like, I don't know, some mental illness. Well, I, guess bulimia, I guess it is mental illness, isn't it? If it's, like, for some, like, specific, like, fear, like, whatever, if it's because they have, like, a condition, like, a health condition and they can't keep food down, of course that's awful and I feel really bad for them. But people who are anorexic or bulimic because straight up they're afraid of being fat, like, dog, that's embarrassing. That's so embarrassing for you. Like, your priorities are so stupid. That's an and interesting you're a take. Okay. It is a hot. Like, she clearly is, a, like, slightly a bigger person. I mean, and she's the hottest like, of takes. <laughs> and she's like, if you're afraid to be have curves, fuck you. She's like, I'm not, I'm not anti-eating disorder. I just want to make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. <laughs> I want to make sure you're, you're really mentally stable. When you go into a severe mentally ill, uh, Ill, uh, affliction, I, this is such bad faulty logic. What is the percent? Well, is it 50%? I don't know. What is the percentage of people? I wonder who are, who are, who, who are anorexic out of fear of being fat. I would, I'm sure it's like 10%. I would say 99%. You'd say it's, she's mostly right that that's, that is what the, she's mostly right. I don't know if she. No, I would not say she's mostly right. You think most people who have anorexia are afraid of getting fat? What do you think it's for? Mental illness, like she said? I don't know. It's all mental illness. What do you think it is? It's like a healthy diet? It's the, There's no such thing as... I mean, it's like it's like saying, like, I just feel bad for people that are, like, depressed. Because it's like, well, uh, unless they're depressed because they're <laughs> depressed for because they're sad about something that happened to them that was bad... But just like what you don't want to be, you don't, you're sad. Like that's like pathetic. I just, there's no one that's healthy mentally that has an eating disorder. It's a, it's a disorder. You just latched on. Isn't it about like control? I think it's about, Mm. I think so. I don't know that it's just about fear of being fat. I think it's all body image. It's all body image, isn't it? I don't know. I don't have an eating disorder. So this is a, this is a white hot take i i would say this is a blistering lava hot take (laughs) and if you are out there and suffering from an eating disorder just know that the endless honeymoon podcast has your back it's what a wild take it's so interesting like being fat isn't bad ergo if you are anorexic because you don't want to be fat you're being kind of like selfish and vain i mean yeah i what do you think tosh Listen, she's leaving an anonymous message. No, I love her. I'm glad she mm, called in. I don't think she's going to fess up to this thought. Would you... Okay, do us a favor, person that called. You're clearly a frequent caller. Send us your social media profile um, with your full handle, and we will post it on our Instagram, and we'll just see if there's any feedback. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. All right. Well, let's listen to another secret. I think I need a palate cleanser. A palate cleanser? You say palate cleanser after the eating disorder call? Yeah, like a little, a little lemon sorbet. That would, that would do everyone nice. <laughs> that would, it would. <laughs> who wouldn't want that? I'll tell you. Grapefruit who sorbet. Want it. I would like grapefruit sorbet. One bite. I could tell you for dessert. Want it. Dessert? That's the trigger word for me. Okay, let's hear another secret. Hello, <laughs> long time listener, first time secret lever here. <laughs> So I think this was like four-ish years ago. Um, I was with my boyfriend. We just started dating, and we were on the night flight home from Vegas. So we'd had like a long, saucy day of drinking, and then, you know, we're on this dark flight home, and we're like in the back of the plane. I'm in the middle aisle or middle row, and my boyfriend is at the window, and we have like some a young person, like a young guy who's probably like 15 or something sitting to my left. Anyways, it's like dark on the plane and we're both kind of horny and I'm like laying in his lap and all of a sudden I can tell basically that he got hard and we had like a big pillow with us too. So basically I like lay my head on the pillow and then start 
shocking and hysteric. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the flight was also really turbulent Mm -hmm. and that actually helped (laughs) quite a bit uh, Mm -hmm. with the motion. So anyway, yeah, he did finish my mouth. Um, And so kind of crazy because looking back on that, like that decision definitely could be sex offender. I mean, Mm -hmm. there was literally someone next to us, but pretty sure he had no idea what was going on. But also I have a question. Do you think um, that is considered like, do you think that means that I'm in the mile high club now? Um, yeah. So yeah, anyways, that's my secret. She's Thanks. more worried Bye. about that than like the sex offender status. <laughs> mile high club. If you really take that seriously. Yes. I think any sort of, any sort of sexual contact. Mm-hmm. Definite. No, I think mile high is orgasm. Oh, you have to come. Yeah. No, I disagree completely. I think that's really um, a backwards and narrow minded thought. I think you have you're to saying come. if you get fucked in the butt, in the airplane bathroom, but nobody Someone nuts. Someone came. But nobody nuts. Mm. That you're not in the Mile High Club? Not technically. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I take the Mile High Club admission very seriously. Yes, Laura? <laughs> he came? Oh, he came. She's in the club. She's in the club. I would have said she was in the club regardless. Um, you think you just like create a little friction under a blanket and you're in the Mile High Club, honey? Uh-uh. By the way, did I ever tell you about the time I met a stranger on an airplane? and we You had, held her hand. I held her hand. That is so... <laughs> Stupid. What club is that? That is the like bitch boy club. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I am in the half mile club. What's that? I've jerked off in an airplane bathroom. Ew. What do you mean ew? She sucked somebody's dick in front of a child. <laughs> I get the ew? People are like lining up. It smells like shit. There's like piss on the floor and you're mm. like. Ooh, 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 ooh. That is. I was going to say. People are like, hello, uh, my child needs to use the bathroom. I need to breastfeed. Hello. Is someone in there? There's like people clicking. You're like. How do you. I was going to say, how do you know the sound that I make when I orgasm so well? But then I realized how you know. That is it. That's a spot on it. No, but you have to hurry up and it's dirty and there's like soap everywhere, you know. Hey, it happened. Do you wipe it up with one of the toilet seat covers? No, you you bust into the little um, uh, airlock. Ew. You know, and then. Do you look in the mirror? There's like the whole time, everywhere. every time, every time, the whole time I make eye contact with myself every time. All right. Listen, if you have a juicy, disgusting, uh, bad take <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that it, you don't want any of your friends to know, but you want us to know the public, please give us a call. 213-222-8608. That is our secret hotline. Oh yeah. And if you, uh, have an eating disorder, um, you can go to, uh, uh, you can call 888-375-7767 and get in touch with somebody at the National Association of Anorexia Nervosa and Associated Disorders. That's their hotline. If you need help, you are not a bad person for having an eating disorder, no matter what your reason is, as long as you're not a Republican. No, Come I'm just to- kidding. Even Republicans can call the line. Come to our live show May 4th in L.A. Email us if you want to be on that show. Maybe you have a problem, yep. something you'd like to ask us live. You will get free tickets to the show. Yes. And if and you, maybe a book. You would uh, be so kind as to follow our Patreon. By the way, I had an idea. I'm going to pitch it right now. No one's heard it. Uh, we do these regular um, extra secret dumps, but I thought it might be kind of cool to do a, a Patreon-only Ask Us Anything. It's not for advice. This is just any question you have for me, Natasha. Special episode for the Patreoners. You know, maybe maybe that'll get your maybe that'll get your asses in gear. All right, you well, know, listen. five bucks a month get you on that extra episode tip. We love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you too. I love you. I would suck your dick on an airplane with a teenager next to me. I would jerk off in an airplane bathroom thinking of you. So you think you're in the Mile High Club because you masturbated? Half mile. Half mile. Oh my god. Half mile. Let me see your card. If they don't give you a car, have you have you ever had sex on an airplane? I jerked someone off. Did he come? Yeah, that's why I'm like oh, you're talking in. down to you. Oh, I'm that's in. why you think you're like big shit here. Yeah, I Got really it. do think Got I'm it. pretty cool. big shit. All right, Lo- well, love you. <laughs> love you too. <laughs>